Heather McDonald has got the juicy scoop. When you're Hello and scoop, welcome to Juicy to Scoop. We have so much to cover. I have your favorite, Chris Frangiola here. I mean, there are crimes. There is a second wave of uh, accusations happening in Hollywood in the Me Too movement that's going crazy. We're going to get into that. But here's this is a treat that I just was like, this is going to be such a treat for Chris Frangiola. Okay. So Chris and I are from the San Fernando Valley, and we frequent many places on Ventura Boulevard, correct? Yes. And you're not too far from White Oak and Ventura, correct? No, not at all. Very close. Balboa and Ventura, kind of, which is a few blocks away. Now, anybody that has a teenage boy knows that there is a Chick-fil-A at Encino and um, in Encino right there. Yeah. And as I'm getting my boys Chick-fil-A's, as a good mother does... I look up and I see this billboard, which is on the YouTube show. You guys, you go to youtube.com slash Heather McDonald. It's called The Moscatels, a family full of luxury, love, and drama, now streaming on snobworld.com. I mean, I'm giving this girl such good advertising, but it's just crazy. Okay, so I'm like, what is this? So I take a photo of it, and then I come home to watch it with Drake. This is The Moscatels? Yes. And I'm like, is this woman 40? And he, But he looks kind of young. I'm like, what is this thing? So they did their own reality show, and they just put it on a website. and they But they shot it like, um, kind of like the Netflix. Oh, like Selling Sunset. Selling yeah. Sunset. It looks what did like I the say? beginning Sell, of Selling yeah. Sunset, yeah. <laughs> it's just them just dressed up, showing signs of, like, Rolls Royces. <laughs> showing somebody's <laughs> uncle. Yeah. Okay, so I start to watch it, and it's like a parody of a bad reality show, but yeah. it's not a parody. They're, They're being serious. I'm so confused. They're 22, each of them. They have a two-year-old, and they're like, we've been running this website for a year called snobworld.com, and we're just working all the time, and just people that want a luxury experience, like, just contact us, and we make it happen. I'm like, what, like, 55-year-old mo- with money is going to be like, let me... And what's going on in the valley is also down the street are these big billboards where I live closer towards Woodland Hills of Black China, like Black China Closet, Black China Lashes. And I'm like, these people are buying billboards near where they live. Yeah. They're so thirsty that they're like, when I go down the street to go to Starbucks at White Oak and Ventura, I want to see myself. And Black China, who lives at Ventura and between Winneka and DeSoto, she wants to see herself. Yeah, they want to take a picture in front of it. Or So here's the sad part. I've considered doing the exact same thing. Well, yeah. <laughs> what, if, what does it cost for a billboard? Have you looked? Kelly, can we look it up? I... I know, like, if you're going to do it on Sunset, which is where you'd want to do it, because yeah, that's, that's the where all time. the agents are, that's where right, people right, right. are. That's a, um, I'm imagining it's like fifty thousand a month, yeah, or a fifty, a hundred thousand a month. I don't know. And above the Chick Fil A and Encino, you could probably get it for a hundred bucks. No, I don't think a hundred bucks. But no, you know what I mean. I it's would probably think much at less. least if the company is out front. I think at least ten thousand dollars a month, at least if not more. Oh, I think I think you're too high. I really do. Okay, well, we're going to find out because I'm about to do it. Juicy Scoop Billboard. Juicy Scoop Billboard or, um, you know, I'll be announcing soon of how you can watch my special. So maybe I will. But I, why not do it right where I can see it? Yeah. I'm paying this much. I don't want to have to drive all the way down to Hollywood and Highland to see myself or Sunset and Doheny to yeah. see myself and have lunch with it every day, which I would. Mm-hmm. I would probably be going to try to chicken salad and sit next to it every day, just stare up at it, knowing now it's you know now it's September 10th, now it's September 28th. I only have three more days to be a star. Right. I mean, it's essentially what Angeline did. Well, do you know that? I believe Angeline's husband at the time owned the billboard, all the billboards. That's how. Uh, do you think so he's I, still available? I, I think he's long since dead. But anyone who didn't rent them. They would put her uh, ad on there. So that's how she kind of became famous because he was the billboard guy. Anyway, in the show, they're like, so it's so fake. And they're like, we have such a big shoot happening today. What's going on? Well, um, now are they husband and wife? They're husband and wife and they're only 22. And then he has like some illness. And she's like, it's so sad. I have to be with him every day. 
because he had, he he could have a seizure. But then they reenact this really bad fight. Like, it's the worst acting. Like, she throws a yeah. glass at him, and she takes the kid. And she's like, I've been gone for eight days. And I'm like, I thought you said you could never leave your husband's side. Then they do this fashion shoot, just like in their driveway in Encino. Oh, like, God. all dressed up in the slow-mo and the glam. And it's like, there, we're in such a society where anyone can just say they have a, some huge business and the slow-mo fake, like, doing a red carpet. It's yeah. just... It's amazing. Anyway, I followed her and she wrote, thank you for following me. She immediately oh, wrote me back. And now what is snob? I'm like, your billboard's working. I said, I, I saw your billboard. What is snob world? Is that their That's thing? their website where they you go and if you want to like- Oh, go you want to be like snobby and Yeah, rich. you want to go on like a private jet or something. I feel like they're not going to come through. Like if I <laughs> book my deal with them, that it's not going to work. I don't know if this is on the up and up. I don't feel they're on the up and up. I mean, it's just, you guys- so if you think that I should get a billboard, we could have a billboard party. We could just stand under it. Like, well, I I just saw recently that Joe Coy uh, was he has a billboard and he went and posed in front of it, and it was on like Hollywood and Highland, like you said. So he had to travel far to that. No, but he's not paying for it himself. Netflix no, is paying. No, yeah, of course. I'm saying, full disclosure, I will have to pay for my own billboard. Yeah. Um, I just had a birthday. It's been a dream of mine to have a billboard. It used to be bus benches. I fulfilled that as a realtor. Yeah. It used to be shopping carts. I fulfilled that as a realtor. Um, I had a dream of having a book. I've done that. Yeah. I I still have a dream of being on an RTD bus. I feel like these are all relatively easy dreams to accomplish. The books are easy to accomplish. No, not no. You no. I'm saying those are the ones you've already done. You've already done the difficult all these ones. things. I can pay for. Yeah. A bus well, the bench, book is not, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how much a bus is. Yeah, I, yeah. But I'd rather have a billboard because I don't know where that bus is. Right. And I don't want to be, you know, fall, chasing a bus <laughs> to see myself. <laughs> right. So, Kelly, we're gonna find out what is available. Well, now they in Los Angeles we have a, we have these extended buses where they're even they put like a second extension on them and they have like almost like a accordion thing in the center so yeah, you can yeah. turn corners oh, can turn, yeah, like a so waste. you could put on the front yeah like you put on the front of the bus juicy and on the back of the bus scoop like okay. it could, it could take, take up the entire bus I think that'd be fun All I think right. it's less than you think I, I'm gonna guess it's less than $10,000 a month alright what do you, we have to call what Kelly's just writing me a note we have to call a number oh we have to call the, bell, the billboard out I don't front know this billboard is out front people. billboard or if somebody, if out front, since I just gave you a huge shout out and you want to do something with me, I mean, it's just, it's it's incredible. Honestly, Britney Spears, this angle looks like she could be a little person. Britney Spears is doing all of these Instagrams. She found this one part of her house that she likes to do yeah, it, it from. Like, it looks like a cheesecake factory. Like she's, It's just like that, a white that, background. Oh, that's the other. Yeah. No, she's usually and, dancing in the living room that looks like a very garish Museum. Well, then you haven't seen her in a week because look no, at I her. Have. Look at her page for the last week. Yeah. it's the same thing, and it's all this white background, and it's very high up. And she looks down, and she has a very long torso. Yes, and kind of shorter legs, which is a great body. She's got like it's a, a dancer great body, body, but the shorts are so low down. Literally, the button is like above her like pubes, and she shows her stomach, and she just keeps walking back and forth. Now, where did she get those tiny... T- those are the shorts that she's had. I feel like those are shorts that she's had for many years. That was always her look, those tiny shorts. They were shorts. Jaden's in first grade. <laughs> yeah, she's been wearing them. And now she's still wearing they're the like tiny little, little they're outfit. They're like, yeah. And, and this was her yesterday. She did something she for did the something uh, LGBTQ for pride. Uh, for pride. And she's very happy with her look. I mean, it's it's she does numerous pictures where you swipe by to the next one. That's all the same photo, basically. Yeah. It's just a little different. And, I mean... I'm very concerned about I'm the concerned voice. Too. I'm concerned about the voice, the, the, the still childlike voice. There's well, something... the voice is also, like, really energized, too. It's like this. Yeah. Hey, guys, I just want to tell you, it's a beautiful day. I'm going to do some exercise, right? Because it's Pride Week, and that makes me really happy. So now we're going to do some dancing and some fun. Okay. Ah. Uh. Yeah, like it's but very... it's still, and I, I like I feel like there's there's been some trauma in her life, and normally sometimes when you have trauma in your life, 
you keep you, you and I've heard this and I'm, I'm not kidding when I You've say this. You've talked about it before. Yeah, you stay with the same voice you had when the trauma occurred. So whatever happened to her, like that's why she still does baby voice. Oh baby, baby. Yeah, that. That was a tough time. And then this guy, her boyfriend. Yeah. Is th- that is, is this real or is this this can't possibly be real, right? He's obviously. Uh, I think it's real. I talked to her ex boyfriend, who was the agent that was with her for a while while she was in Vegas. Uh-huh. They were engaged, and then they broke up. And he was like. Maybe a decade older than her. He was cute. And I was like, please tell me, like, what? And he just, he he was smart enough not to tell me anything. Yeah. But um, I got the sense that, the, like, she is sexy. She is beautiful. Uh, men fall in love with her. And then after a few years, you kind of realize there's something not completely right. And maybe you're maybe few years. I realized it after a few uh, Instagram <laughs> videos. Like, no, I'm not I'm not kidding when I say it. There's obvi- like let's face it. I'm a Britney Spears fan too. I like the music and I think she's great. But there's something obviously wrong with her. There is. Yeah. There is, but is that wrong? So wrong? Because if loving her is wrong, I don't want to be right <laughs> or whatever. Wrong. No, but it, so what? So what that she doesn't wash her hair and wears too much eyeliner and thinks she looks great? Yeah. So what that she likes to work out and do these fast, strange video things? She's got 25 million followers. If you're her boyfriend and you're like her a workout guy and she's sweet to you and you guys go to the beach and you lift her up like a weight or whatever and you do one video a day and you're living in a $20 million beach house and she's just like, hey, babe. Want to go get some? I want to get an iced latte today. And he's like, "Sure." I mean, if yeah. maybe the, as as your her boyfriend, that's the pinnacle. Like, who cares? It's not like she's beating him up. It's not like, I mean, some people are in. Have relation- you ever met her? No, I've never met her. I've met her many times. And many I said times. It, well, she used to date a guy I worked with at, at Mirabelle and come in like every night. How about I mean, just hearing the story it, you now? You can look it up right now. It's all over. He, what year are we talking? Oh, this is 15, 20 years ago. So she was under 18. She was, no, no, she was of age. She then was, she must have been just 18. Just 18. No, probably a little older. Can you look up how old Britney Spears is? Um. Anyway. You they, wondered what was going to get you canceled today. How is this going to get gonna do, Now we're going to do a little time chart. Just kidding. No, no, no. I don't know. I just was assuming... So she dated someone who worked there. Yeah, she dated uh, his name. She's was, thirty-eight. Uh, his name okay. was uh, Mike. Um, it's all uh, it's all on Us Magazine. Like the paparazzi would be outside every single day, and they would show up. I haven't told the story before in here. No, you absolutely have not. Thank oh. God you still have fresh stories. Go well, on. they would show up every day. <laughs> now, now this is when she had a guy doing. Uh, I don't know if it was Sam Lufty. It wasn't Sam. No, Lufty. this is pre Sam. Lufty. This is pre Sam Lufty. Yeah. It was another guy, but this guy was obviously a uh, gay. Okay. And he would call up the restaurant. And I think he liked this guy. The the waiter's name was Mike Marchand. Mike okay. Marchand. Okay. And he now lives back in Boston and and whatever. But they dated, but they did like, they would come in like every night, and we would give them a separate table upstairs. And but this guy would call and make the reservation. Wait, hold on. Brittany would come in with her gay best friend. Yes. And, and he, sit in a booth. And then your friend, who was the waiter, would wait on them and then they'd go home together. And then he would, no, they would, I don't know if it ever got like to a sexual thing, but they would come in every night for about two weeks. And this guy, who was her assistant, kept saying that Brittany's into you. But I believe, we all believed he was into him and he was using Brittany to get to this guy, Mike Marchand. And you were friends with Mike Marchand. Yes. He's and, a very, he was a very good friend of mine. I worked and, with him every and night. And Mike was straight. Yes, knowledge. Mike was straight. Yes. And did Mike was Mike interested in dating Britney? Yeah, well, he thought the whole thing was crazy and wild. It's and because it, the paparazzi was outside every night, uh, taking pictures in through the windows of the restaurant. Uh, so much so that one day, did you hope that you would get discovered somehow? Because this was a couple years before you were yeah, really I was happening. Yeah, still, I was still waiting tables. Now so, was Meghan Markle working there? No, this okay. she came later. But okay. Uh, there was one point where Britney was leaving, and the paparazzi was so insane. There, were, there was back. This is back in the paparazzi when they used to pull up in yes. thirty-five cars, and uh, and Chase she you, needed yeah. a hat to leave because she didn't have a hat. And I yeah. had a hat, this like newsboy hat that oh, I used yeah, to wear. Oh yeah, you still love that look. And I gave it to her, and she wore it out and never gave it back to me. But do you have? And you could see pictures of it online. Her, her in the hat. Did you save the photos as just like a memory that your head has touched her head? 
Uh, I wish I wish they're on a, they're on Us magazine. But I, so anyway, my point is she shows up in a news hat. Anytime next week, then we know she's listening to Juicy Scoop. And that's like her signal, like her yeah. wink to you. Uh, I believe that was it. Oh, my God. We yeah, found the I news. I believe that might be it. We think we found Chris's hat. I used to wear it over to Red Rock and Saddle Ranch. And that's the one, the gray one. Oh, I it's think the that gray was the one. one. We found she stole the... it from me and never came and never gave it back. to go to. But you forgive anyway, her. My point was that I would, you know, you'd go up to her after and go, oh, did you enjoy everything? And she was just... Like I'm not kidding. She was just um, not not there behind the eyes. She was just like, "Yes, everything's great," and just gone. Like nothing, no connection. Well, I definitely. I don't don't think she like knew who Mike Marchand was. Like this guy kept saying, "No, she's really into you." Uh, You know, come over, and he went over to her house a couple times. And I think, listen, a lot of times people are in a relationship with someone who's crazy, and it's abusive, physically abusive, emotionally abusive. She's like just a nice, rich, crazy girl who's okay. got a good body, who likes to work out with you. He's like a, a hot trainer looking guy. I don't think that he's like, God, I was dying to talk about, you know, some political discussion. I wish my girlfriend would be more down for that. Do you know where they met? Do you, uh, I'm assuming uh, he was hired to be her trainer. Oh, he used to date Jessa Hinton. She's like who, an Instagram person. Who was like an Instagram Playboy model person. Yeah. Yeah, so he just liked pretty girls, and this is giving him a lifestyle. Listen, guy, there are plenty of guys that are just as smart as the gold-digging girls. Yeah. And they're like, hey, I got it pretty good. I am not going to screw this up. I have a life I could never afford to have on my own, even close. So... I'm happy. Okay. And I and I like that she's simple and does these weird videos and we can call each other babe and people love us. And so what if she's off? Like I'm she's not, not s- hurting anyone. No, but I think I'm trying to tell the world because the world right. is concerned and they uh, people are critical of if you do speak about it openly. I'm speaking about it openly. I think she's safe. I think she's fine. I like that she's with this guy. I don't want this guy to leave her. She has plenty of money. She never has to go on tour again. Don't make her. No. What about the Vegas thing? Is that still going on or was before, you know, everything closed right. down? Right. Well, I, it ended because she said pre-corona, I'm ending it because um, my dad's health and I'm concerned. But there were people thought there were other things like this ticket sales had dropped. Yeah. Which I do think. I think when you, you know, those type of shows, you've got to. I actually talked to Lance Bass about it. And he was like, yeah, I mean, you've got to, like, go away, do a new album. And then come back with something new. You can't just keep doing like the same thing for so many years because even though you're you're fun, I don't know that someone's going to come back like eight times in a row to see the basically the same right show. So I think if she wanted to create new music or whatever, then I think she could come back. But like some of us, you're like start to enjoy the quarantine life, of like not performing and being on the beach. And she might just go, you know what? I'm good. Or oh, maybe she'll I, come I back like so. five years from now when the kids are fully grown. And maybe she isn't running around in these crop tops with bad eyeliner and dirty hair anymore. Uh, is it dirty hair or is it bad extensions? It's because both. I feel it's both, right? It's both. I also think there's people that just are not into... Like getting in the shower and exfoliating every day, and they're like really, they kind of like their sweaty smell. They like to go in the beach, they like to go to the ocean, then let this let it dry on you, then then sweat a little, yeah, then like pop in the pool and just not take the effort of going in the shower and like fully getting at it. And I think she's kind of like that, and I think he's kind of like that too. And it doesn't really matter. It's almost well, like he's they're a very on an handsome island. guy. Yeah, they're hot. They're yeah. like, you know, it's fine. Okay. I know you have a big problem with the eyeliner. Um, I, I, I don't have a big problem with the eyeliner. I just think the whole thing is just bizarre to me. Yeah. Like, uh, there's just her whole Instagram. Like, she'll post pictures of, of, like, you know, just, like, stock photos of dried flowers and teacups a lot. And Yeah. Like, yesterday, this one. I believe it's this one here. She right. Put, she literally but, had, like, 15 thoughts in a, in a, in a 10-second video. Just bouncing all over the and place. And nobody... You know, and and it's not hurting anyone. So no. well, that's, that's what I'm true. all for. Let's talk about this fun threesome that is supposedly happening. Okay. Now, this is a very juicy thing going on. Okay. Uh, Johnny Depp, married to Amber Heard. Yes. They had a very contentious divorce, and she said 
that he was physically abusive with her. He then is suing her for $50 million for defamation and proving that she might have been the one that was physical. I don't even know how how much money is going into this case. But he is now saying, or his people are saying, that Kara Delevingne, the model, had a threesome affair with Elon Musk and Amber Heard, according to new explosive new testimony that dragged supermodel into Johnny Depp's $50 million defamation suit against the ex-wife. So they have video from the penthouse where they supposedly had this threesome in the elevator. I mean, first of all, what does that matter to the defamation? Like, so even if she had a threesome, I don't understand why Johnny Depp's people think to prove that she had a threesome, what, that she wasn't a a loyal wife? We already know she was bi, but I guess he's trying to say she had a threesome while she was supposed to be a committed wife to him, but I still don't, who cares? I don't get why this is important, but of course I love the news. And how do you feel about Elon Musk having threesomes like this? Well, now this is the elevator picture, but now in the elevator, is that, is that, who is he, is that, are they both in the elevator shots? Both the girls? So they're going up to his apartment? I guess there was elevator shots that proved that they were like, all, the same night all going up. I don't yeah. know if all three of them were in the elevator or like two were there and then one went up to join. I um, I, I don't, I, Amber Heard, I know the Johnny Depp story. I know that she said he was abusive and now they're saying that maybe he, she was the abusive right. one. Right. She bit his finger off or something or bit something off, right? Yeah. Um, But uh, I don't know what, she, now she, what movie has she been? Is she an actress or am I, am I wrong? She's I think been she in, did some movie stuff. She's been known to be in relationships with girls. But Elon Musk, I guess, has been rumored to do some threesomes. But he said, no, I have, I have not. And then, oh, and then the Kara girl has been rumored to be in a bunch of threesomes too, right? So, you know, hey, if you're like a threesome expert... And you, it's like it must be like you know the like how some people only so many people know how to do like the foxtrot, right? Very difficult yeah, footwork. Yeah. Uh-huh. I assume there's certain people that are very good in the threesome world. Like they know the moves. That's almost they almost prefer a threesome to a twosome. To where you know, yeah, I, that's an interesting way to look at it. Yeah, then you could say I know that he, yeah, he needs a certain amount of attention. Yeah, she needs a certain amount of attention. And, and, and now I'm going to get my dough. body in this position so everybody... Everybody gets Remember like in theater where you do a train of massages? Yes, yes, yes. And you didn't want to be the last person, but you wanted to be the first because uh-huh. then you could just receive and not give? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like she knows to be in the middle? I don't know. Okay. But anyway, if you're looking to do a threesome and you're at a bar and you see Kara there, I say proposition her. If you and your guy are cute enough. Kara Delvine. Yes, she is a threesome expert. And um, I guess Elon now is is saying I don't have threesomes because he's got his child X one one ninety yeah. fifty four or uh-huh. whatever that and, baby and, is, and he's married to that girl. Are they married? Or just I don't girlfriend? think they're married. Yeah. What is she DJ something? She's a DJ, and then the baby's an alien or what? I don't know. Yeah, X one seven nine. Now, Chris, last time you were here, we yes. got deep into the craziest story ever, which is the Lori Vallow story. And you told me to watch the 2020 where they wrapped it up recently. They wrapped it, it was up. more of the same a lot I, I watched it. However, this woman, yeah, Melanie Gibb, was really the explosive part of the story. Because, as you guys know, unfortunately now, um, both children's bodies have been found in the proper, on the backyard of Lori Vallow's fifth husband, who was claiming to be the second coming who was going to take everybody on this trip. The one trip. she went to Hawaii with and all that. Right, and he yeah. was like this guy who wrote all these things and he was kind of forming his own cult. Anyway, this woman now is like, yeah, I was totally part of it. I was like ready down. I was the one for, I was part of the 144,000, 144,000. And Lori would say, look, when the world ends, only the 144,000, which you're one of them, congrats, is going to go up there. So it's probably going to be a lot of people like in tents, but we don't like to camp. So we need to get enough money so we have like nice houses to live when we're the only people left on earth. Yeah. Basically, the only way to do that is to get rid of our spouses. Oh. So then her husband, number four, was killed uh, by her brother. Her brother, yeah. And then his wife died uh, like two weeks later. And two weeks before they got married, she suddenly died. Um, very suspicious, but they like buried her in like a hot second. They've since but they exhumed, exhumed the body, yeah, yeah right. to find out what the deal is. And have they found anything? 
Not yet. Okay. But he had said to Melanie, like, she won't mind dying. That's what oh. he said. He goes, I don't think she'd really mind it. Like, you know. But this is but she has to die because Lori and I I've lived 31 lives. Lori's one lived 21 lives, but in seven of those lives, we've been married to each other. Oh. So it's really important that we get married to each other before the end of the world so that we can lead these 144, and we can't if we both have these spouses. So we need to get rid of them. And then Lori's telling her that uh, Tylee has become a zombie. Then they don't see Tylee. That's Tylee, the they, daughter. They figured out Tylee was killed two weeks before the little boy, JJ. Oh. And then she said, J.J.'s become a zombie, too. Yeah. And Melanie was like, oh, really? They're becoming zombies? Just like your husband and his wife? And not till she calls her and says, hey, heads up. Cops are going to be calling, asking about where J.J. is. We told him that you took him to the movie Frozen. Just take some photos of some kids at the movie theater and just say that J.J.'s with you. And then she tells Keith Morrison, she goes... And that's when I knew that um, they weren't zombies and something bad happened to JJ. Yeah. I'm like, that's when you realized right. that kids don't suddenly become zombies, you weirdo. Yeah. And she was she in Hawaii? Where did they meet this woman? Or in she met they met in Arizona at okay. the Church of Latter Day Saints. She was very into like the Second Coming. Yeah. And then took her to Utah to meet Daybell, Chad Daybell, where he had all these books written. And then they all started doing this podcast together about the end of the world. Yeah. And um, and now she regrets not telling anyone that that uh, they kept saying their kids were being zombies. And so then they go, they're the zombies, and then we have to kill the zombies and then justify it. And then anyway, they realize the brother probably killed them. But they killed the, the kids? Yeah, but then the brother died of a heart attack like two weeks, a couple of weeks after burying Now, I know this is a morbid question, but how did they kill the kids? Were they... Were, they don't know. They don't know yet? Were they, they shot don't... or strangled? Or... I, I, they, I don't think they know yet. I think oh, they're okay. like checking the bodies to kind of figure it out. Yeah. Because the one girl was like 19 or 18 or something. She, she, she was 17. Yeah. I know so, she could drive and everything. So able to get away from people if they were doing yes. something to her. Right. Wow, it's that's really crazy. So, story. but thank God they're in in prison and everything. But it took they, a long time for them to be. They did arrested. say July twentieth is the end of the world, and that's coming up. Yeah, yeah. So well, everybody should eat a huge meal on July nineteenth, just yeah. in case. Right, right, right. <laughs> that's a good idea. I think I'm gonna have something nice. Yeah, just, on just July I'm just saying, just like just in case. Yeah, because maybe that. Yeah, if they're all turned out to be right. We're gonna look foolish. We absolutely are, and then you're gonna be like, oh well. Should have listened to Lori Vallow. Oh, sorry. Oh, July twenty second. So July. But have a big meal on the twentieth and the twenty first. Yes. Yeah. Probably, you know, you want to lead up to it. Yeah, lead up to it because you don't want to get you don't want to eat so much that you're too stuffed to eat it all the day before. Right. Yeah. All right. Okay, so now let's talk about. So there's so much going on in the comedy world, Chris. There's a lot going on in the comedy world. We have we're we're, it's hot. We have to talk about it, and we have to explain what's going on. Okay. Give our opinions, what we think will happen. Okay. Because both you and I are in the comedy world. We've been in the comedy world for a long time. We know many of the players involved yes. in what we're talking about. Okay. So this came to me about a week ago before it broke. Another female comedian I know on the East Coast sent me this girl's um, blog that she had written uh, about two years ago. This is a Jeff Ross story. This is, sorry, this is Jeffrey Ross. And this girl dated a blog, put up a blog on Facebook. Yeah. And it, the blog was called, I was 15, he was 33. Mm-hmm. And she, her name's Jessica Radke. Radke? Jeff, Jessica Radke. Yeah, Radke. Okay, sorry. Yeah. So her name's Jessica Radke. And she, so this, this blog that someone found on Facebook she said, I did this um, many years ago when I was taking a writing course. I've changed the names, and I'm going to share it. And someone kind of found it. And now that it's been exposed, now she is doing videos and showing her receipts of, in fact, the story. And the story is that when she was 15, she uh, moved to New York with her dad. The dad said... You don't have to uh, go to school. I don't care. I don't know where the mother was. 
And she, he goes, but let's go to a comedy show. So they're going by the comedy, by the Boston Comedy Store, or whatever it's called. Boston but Comedy it's, Club, yeah. But it's in New York. And come see a show. So it's the first time she sees live stand-up. She's like obsessed, loves it. And so they meet. she meets this girl there named Gina, who's like the manager. And she's like, can I work here? And they go, sure, you can work here. Then she starts working for Barry Katz, who is a prominent comedy manager. And managing the Boston Comedy Club at the time, I think. Right. Yeah. And according to her video... And Jeff Ross's is manager. Yes. And according to her video, which you can find, she's proving this is... I worked for um, Barry Katz. He says, I didn't, but it was $400 under the table once, you know, every week. Here's photos of me in the office. She's got all these things. So then she meets Jeffrey Ross and is taken with him. And is excited and goes and tells Gina, who's an adult who works at the, st- the, the comedy place, oh, my God, Jeffrey Ross is so great. And she goes, um, do you want me to give him your number? And she's like, yeah. Jeffrey Ross then calls her and asks her out. And she asks, she tells her dad, I'm going to go out to dinner with Jeffrey Ross. He's like, Jeffrey Ross, he was just on the David Letterman show. Oh, my God, this is amazing. I can't believe my daughter's dating Jeffrey Ross. Again, she's 15. Right. He's 33. The dad doesn't seem to have a problem with it. She goes, and according to the essay that she wrote back then, they immediately have sex, and they start dating and are a couple till till she's 18, to the point where he asked her to marry him, and then they start going out in public. She shows all these tickets of I was his date at the Friars Club in New York. I did this. I did that. Right. Here we are here. Here I am in his apartment. Here I am wearing his hat. Not the hat that you gave Britney Spears, but a no, similar no, a looking hat. hat. Yeah, like a fedora. Like a famous yeah. hat that he's been in a lot of photos. Here we are. Here I am with Gina. And in her video, she keeps remembering, she keeps pointing out this the girl, Gina did this. Gina was there. Gina. And I feel like she's kind of making the comparison, or at least I was, to this Gina girl being like a Galene Maxwell. Yes. Of the, the Epstein. The the Epstein. Yes. Yeah. Like, you knew you were a female, you know. However, they're like in a full relationship, but she's right. absolutely underage, and this is all around 1998, 99. There's also, yes. I would like to uh, interject and say this. Uh, I watched this video that she made, that okay. the girl made. She's... She's showing a lot of receipts. Yeah. True. She's showing, you know, uh, that I went to this roast, the invitation yes. to the roast of of Jerry Stiller. I think it was one of them, and Dick yeah. Van Dyke was another one. Now anyone can have those receipts. Yeah. We all, you know, have those. Uh, then she's showing pictures with Jeff Ross. That could be pictures taken in any comedy club right. after a show. Not, not, not any pictures of them lying in bed together or anything like right. that. Uh, but she does keep bringing up a Polaroid camera that he has in his apartment that she says in the videotapes that she's used many times. And she goes, and, and other girl, like he's got Polaroid. He's, she says in this video, he's used it with other girls. I'll find, I have the pictures or I'll find the pictures of, that he's taken of me and of other girls uh, right. with this Polaroid camera. So, And then also she's showing photos much like the photo that speaking of Jeffrey Epstein, the um, the main girl that accused um, Prince Andrew of having sex with her at the nightclub when she was seventeen, it's like that one hour photo right. that is very you can't doctor it up like you can on an iPhone today. So she has photos like that too, where she's like, see on the back, you see the date, you see it's like a one hour photo. You know it's from nineteen ninety nine. There's right. no way for me to doctor it up. But you're right, the photos don't show like. Yes. Okay. So, um, now yeah, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, just just I'm not saying whether he's right or wrong. But oh, so here's some photos that we're showing. She's showing on here. We have it on the screen. We have the Polaroid. Okay. So then she goes on to say that when when Barry Katz got married in L.A., she was 17, and Jeffrey Ross flew her out. Invited her to stay at his place, which was off of Doheny, and she had photos of his view. Yeah, she does say all that. And we went to the wedding together, and I was 17. And she goes, I don't know exact date, but I remember what I wore. I wore a replica of the dress that uh, Gwyneth Paltrow wore when she won her Oscar for Shakespeare in Love, which is a long pink spaghetti strap dress. Yeah. Okay. Not to make it about me, 
but that was my bridesmaid's dress Whoa. in 2000 for my two sisters. But did you? It's do- a Nicole Miller, and it was an exact re- replica of what just uh, what Gwyneth wore. Now, when you got it, did you get it because you liked Gwyneth in it, or did yes? You- oh, okay. Sorry. And I just thought it was pretty, and I like pink. And Nicole Miller, you know, had a nice store on Sunset, and Sunset not far from Doheny. I don't know if she bought that dress at the Nicole Miller, but I'm saying it was, you know, 1999, 2000. Right. And so she was 17. And now she said at the end of it, I have, and this is a part legally I don't have the knowledge to really say, but she says, according to the statutes of um, limitations in California, I have until I'm 40, I'm 36 now, to bring charges or to hope that the DA would bring charges against Jeffrey Ross. And in legal age of consent in New York is 17, but it's 18 in California. And because of this wedding and everybody saw her there and everybody saw that she was drinking from the Gina to the Barry Cats, that now she is in fact, there was a crime that was committed. Right. And I'm looking for an attorney and anyone that can help me can help me. Now, also, I'll, I'll say this. Barry Katz also said that she did not work at the new at the Boston Comedy okay. Club. He did say that. That's when she shows the picture of her sitting at a desk in the Boston Comedy Club saying, here I am working there. Right. Which I could, yeah, you could be back sitting at a desk. It doesn't right. mean you work there. But uh, anyway, so Barry Katz, I guess, has, has made a comment about it saying she never worked there. I don't know if that's to protect him from hiring, you know, people who are, are not legal age to work or whatever. Or even or whatever. just paying under the table. Yeah, yeah. paying under the table or whatever. So, and now, I guess you're going to get into that. Jeffrey Ross has come out with a... Tell. Oh, What's okay. The Yesterday or two days ago. Yes, Jeffrey Ross came out with, you know, tweeted uh, or his, apo- not apology. He said, this is complete lies. Um, I don't know if you should, you should probably get it up and read it. Can it's, you pull it, it It's up? interesting. Yeah. Uh, he said, it's a mental health issue. Uh, now, I want to say this is in no way me siding with Jeffrey Ross. I don't know Jeffrey Ross. I don't have any, you know, uh, dog in this fight. Uh, I believe if, if it's... Uh, but then I'm giving you what Jeffrey Ross said. Yeah, we're just reporting on yeah. it, everybody, because it's it's interesting. Okay, so relax. I just get attacked a lot. Oh, yeah, I know. Just don't attack. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway, oh. uh, he says it's a mental health issue. This girl has been... Uh, she said okay. it before about him. Um he... Oh, oh, here it says. He says this is a shortened version or whatever. Okay. This story is old news. It has been investigated numerous times and thoroughly reviewed. I, int- I intend to take legal action. That's Jeffrey Ross. Okay, but there's more to it than that. He okay. also says that this is obviously her husband helping her with this, the girl's husband. She has a husband? I believe she's married now. So according to Jeffrey Ross, I don't. this is what I read yesterday. Jeffrey Ross says it's her husband helping her out. He's the one shooting the video that she, when she's uh, on the couch mm. and all that. And he says the husband is has been convicted of crimes. And uh, so he, be- I guess Jeffrey Ross believes that somewhere along the way she told her husband, hey, I used to, you know, I know Jeffrey Ross. He, and so this guy's like, whoa, let's try and get... I'm I'm just saying what I you know heard. The, let's try and get some money out of Jeffrey Ross and come up with this. I don't know if any of this is true or not, but that's what I've heard. You know I I don't know this girl. And I, you know, and I, but then I hear other people say there's other things. Other people they're like I have other things on Jeffrey Ross. More will come out, so that could be the case. I mean I I just know Jeffrey is like hi you know yeah, funny guy nice to meet you. Um, never hit on me or anything. So I, I don't know. And I saw this and I was like, oh my God, you know, now w- I wonder what, what you do do about this. And, you know, I, I'm like, why is she, and ever, I know that it's wrong to say why come out now. A lot of people are coming out now because there is so much. Right. Um, maybe, and maybe watching like the, the Jeffrey Epstein, you know, Netflix thing really kind of made her go, no, this was really wrong and it really fucked me up and it fucked me up. Because I thought I had the mind and the maturity to be in a relationship with a 33-year-old at 15, and I loved it, but I realized later, no, because it's not okay. And the reasons why it's not okay is because mentally, you shouldn't be having relationships with people under 18. You just shouldn't. It fucks them up, whether they're 15, 16, or 17. It's just not right, and it's against the law. But but yeah, the, but, I mean, the whole thing, like, that's yeah. the... That, the I mean, the main thing is it's completely illegal. <laughs> yes, like, I mean, why wasn't just... he arrested the day? And the other thing is, I'll say this, like, just 
the accusations alone should be enough for him to be fired from whether it be Comedy Central or he's got a new show on TNTBS or something, some comedy, you know, knockout show or something like that. But I mean, would, would that be, I guess. You- well, I'm saying if you're going to fire guys like Lau, Matt Lauer and Kevin Spacey and all these guys, I mean, and when those guys were all fired, they were simply fired on just accusations alone, right? In, in, yeah. In a way. Uh, so I, I, is, well, is, I it, is it changing I think- or... I think in every case it's different. And in some ways, for the first, I call this the second wave of Me Too. A lot of people think we're going to do a second wave of Corona. Yes. I feel like this is the second wave of Me Too. In the first wave of Me Too, I think some people were, what do you call it, collateral damage. I think there were people that had some stuff come up and maybe they were making a lot of money and maybe they were old and the network was like, you know what, this is the perfect way not to renew their contract. We, you know, you this mean like a, like this, a Lauer? Yeah, something. like this yeah. is a morality, you know, right. issue. And in your contract, there's a morality clause. And if we feel for any reason something immoral had happened, we decide it doesn't have to be a judge or jury. We just won't pick up your contract. So I think as far as a Jeffrey Ross thing goes, if these TV shows are set to go or whatever, they can either decide to run it, renew it. Like I think it's just up to them, um, you know. And which is unfortunate because if it isn't true at all. Then, yeah, but that's the case, you know, and people can say what they want to say. And, you know, as Jeffrey Ross, he he can either decide, okay, or if he believes it's it's a complete lie. I've never even kissed this girl ever in my life. Right. Okay. Or do you. But when you're but when you, I think it's like with Chris D'Elia, when it. You know, he could come out right away and go, I'm really sorry, because it was no one was saying that they actually had sex. With Chris D'Elia, it's just a lot of stories of him pursuing them, DMing them, writing inappropriate things right. to girls under 18. So he could go, hey, you know, I'm really sorry if I hurt anybody. I'm, you know, yeah, that was me, but it's not me now. This is like, she's literally said, on the, I would like to press tra- get him arrested so I think in that case, it's like you've got to be like, no, there isn't one part of this. You mean that, if you're Jeffrey Ross? Like if I yeah. was Jeffrey Ross's counsel, right. I would be like, yeah, you can't say, yeah, we made out, but we didn't have sex. Like you just have to say there was nothing. There's nothing here. Right. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Because any little inch of it, then what's true, what's not, I don't know. But any of it, I mean, I think it, it even gets to the point where – because uh, she does a picture she's saying that's in his apartment, whether right. it is or it is, I don't know. But she does hold up these pictures in this video, in these videos where she said this is his apartment. So if she's hanging out, if there's ever even a point where they made out, isn't that a why is a 33 year old man with a fifth like why even have the 15 year old girl back at your apartment? Like none of it makes any sense. I think with certain cases, and I'm not saying this is Jeffrey Ross, but in cases of peep guys being like 30 or whatever and being with girls under age. And also being comedians. It's like you weren't getting the tail when you were 15. You weren't cute. Yeah. You were bullied. You finally get up on stage and you have love and girls are, for the first time, totally attracted to you because you're demanding the room and you're funny and that ugliness becomes adorable to a lot of women. Right. And it's like you're just so thrilled to get it. You don't really think about being discerning and... But I'll, now, as a guy who's yes. been in this business for a long time, same as Jeff Ross, uh, and been on shows where young girls watch and young girls came to our shows and stuff, and I, I'm no saint. I've had my fun on the road, and I've had girls back in the hotel room and stuff, but I don't understand the 15 or the 6. Like, there's plenty of 23-year-olds and 24-year-olds. <laughs> yes. You know, like, I like there and it's... Right. Well, it's I don't the... Men- under- it's like, the- after the show's over at Boston Comedy Club and where Jeffrey Ross is hanging out by the bar, everyone's coming up to him. I don't... Go with the 22-year-old. If you need, feel the need to go with somebody much younger than you, make it a 22-year-old. I don't understand 14 or 15. I just don't understand it. Well, that's the sickness. Because yeah. it's, it's you're dealing with... the A girl at 16 is just as beautiful at 24, maybe more beautiful at 24. Yes, but more. at 16, her brain is six years less knowledgeable, less savvy, 
that much more easy to manipulate, that that much more easy to make her fall in love with you because she hasn't had 10 other boyfriends. Right. So that is why I think. So that's what you that's think it is? Why, yeah, I think that's why they, and also just like, just the youngness of a girl. But like basically, physically, yeah, your body is pretty much what it's going to be at 16, at 24. But it's about your mind and your mentality. And like two years prior, you're playing with Barbies. Like what the fuck, you yeah. know? Like it's, it's. But you think you know now? Uh, you think a guy like Jeffrey Ross is putting that much calculation into it when he just sees the girl walk up at the comedy club bar? No, I d- no, I don't. I just think that's what he he's attracted to, and and she, according to the essay, she actually, you know, providing this is true, blah blah blah, allegedly, she p- kind of pursued him. Yeah, right. She, she said, said she, she does said, say "Have that. call me," and then when she went to his place, she made the first move. Yeah, and then from then on, it became very romantic relationship however she did say he was always paranoid about page six finding out or anybody seeing them together and had they had to be careful to an extent but then she could go to these things like the friars and whatever because everybody else was going right and it's just like anybody that like has their side chick or whatever come to things that their wife is at will come to that you know like yeah. like because you can't i don't know um okay and then we had the other thing that happened around the same time as all the Chris D'Elia stuff coming out. And by the way, Chris D'Elia, his, um, the latest on that is his... Agency all dropped yeah, him. Yeah, agent and manager dropped him. And um, Kelly wrote me when I told her that. And she said, that took a minute. Like with the Vanderpump Stasi Schroeder, like she was dropped like... That you know, within well, that's like what I'm a saying day. about like Lauer. I mean, Lau. Like, I'm just using his him as an example. One day, Matt Lauer was on the Today Show. The next morning, he was not, and it was that quickly. We we didn't hear anything leading up to it or uh, any. But now I don't understand how some of these guys are. St- like you'd think, just to be safe, a, a big network like TBS would be like, yeah, we're not going to show the Jeff Ross show this week. I don't know. Are they showing it this week? Oh, yeah. It was on Sunday night. All right. Yeah, I watched it. Okay. I mean, it's fucking painfully terrible, but uh, that <laughs> has nothing to do with Jeff Ross. You know? Again, it's like when people you know, on Twitter are screaming for cancel this person, What? only certain people can be canceled. Only like a Matt Lauer who's on the Today Show can truly like be canceled. What is good about this world is that we do have – podcasts and stand up which is really our own thing now someone could choose not to book you but hey they're booking louis ck again right so you know hey i who knows who's going to come back but i and guess in not. certain cases uh, i don't know about louis or i don't know about any of it honestly but some of the shit is criminal mm-hmm. uh and 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 for that reason and some of the stuff is just hey you're being a dick in the case of Dalia, i don't think in the case of even louis i don't think anything you do is like was i think criminal. if you're gonna like just in public opinion who knows what's true or not but like the worst would be bill cosby he yes. gets number one under him louis louis just for comics louis ck because he whipped it out. It's hardly the same thing. I mean, I'm it's... saying it's under him. Oh, okay, yeah, sure. A worse two, then. I mean, you throw Woody Allen in there, maybe. If, if, well, if is you... he a stand-up? He was for many years. All yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. So we put him right. under under okay. Bill Cosby. <laughs> then we. There's a long list. Then yeah. we have. Then do we have Crystalia? Sure. Yeah. And then I would put Jeff Ross. If the Jeff Ross stuff is true, then that's Jeff, worse no, than what Je- the lead no, did. Right. You're right. You're right. Then Jeff Ross. Yeah. Then Crystalia. Then barely, like just kind of being a shitty boyfriend and date would be the Chris Hardwick story or the uh, Aziz story. Oh, yeah. From last right. year. Right. Those were just bad Those were just, they were just like, guys. they just, like, Chris Hardwick just wasn't a very good boyfriend to right. this girl. And in retrospect, she was like, hmm. He, he, wasn't, gr- yeah. he wasn't great. And then the Aziz, it was just like kind of a shitty date. But the group, the group part of it, he made fun of her and like she was wearing a Batman costume and he said, you don't look good in Batman. <laughs> like, isn't he like a comic book nerd and made fun of her? Like, really, I'm not kidding. That's what it was. <laughs> it was basically like someone just sharing a story of like, hey, looking back, I dated this guy that wasn't very nice to me. Yeah. And he was older than I was, though she was legal. And again, that age difference sometimes adds to a, a even larger power dynamic than just a guy being more successful than yeah. you or five years older than you. 
And but but anyway, he's back on the wall. He survived. Yeah, it. he's back. But he had some tearful days. Oh yeah, he, had some he, quiet, he didn't think he was coming back. He had some quiet uh, Twitter weeks. Yeah, where he just <laughs> shut down and went to the Hearst Castle or whatever with yeah, his and then wife. Yeah, got married to her. Yeah, yeah it, but it's okay. Right. Um, okay. Now this one came out where they took a clip from Joe Rogan's show with Joey Diaz. Right. And Joey Diaz is Joey a comedian. He's a comedian. I. Used to hang out with him and Josh Wolf at the comedy store, bef- like before I was married, when I was like 26, 27. And they were like ahead of me as far as they were getting spots and I had to do the belly room. Now, I want to say the way I remember the belly room being run is basically someone ran it every night. It was not like someone at the store putting you up. Yeah. One night it was pretty women. Yeah, you could, one you could night like rent it was it this. Out for the night. You could yeah. rent it one night as like, hey, want to do my Irish people show? Whatever. Yeah. So I would do those shows. And Joey Diaz would come up with a cigarette in his New York and he'd be like, you're fucking beautiful. You know what? I'd go down on you for a fucking hour. You know that? Did it. And I would just die laughing. Because yeah. I'm like, this is his shtick. This is what he says on stage. And like... I mean, would I, if I would have been like, Joey, do you really want to do this? I Maybe you would have said yes, but I just thought, like, look at me. Like, I'm a hot, glamorous delight. Right. You're, like, not. Uh-huh. So clearly, like, this is just something of us joking together. So when I saw this story of him telling this story on the show, he says, um, you think I'm fucking kidding you? Yeah, you know, fuck yeah. You got, you got to suck my dick. He's talking about this girl that he said, I... To this get girl, stage time at the comedy To get store. stage time in the belly room. To get in the belly room, I'm gonna gonna be making a call for you. That's the fucking gateway to coming into Hollywood. Everybody knows that. So he basically told a story that th- this young blonde girl wanted to be a female stand-up. He's like, I'll help you get into the belly room. Let's do some coke. Also bring twenty dollars. And so she had to pay him twenty dollars and suck his dick to get a spot in the belly room. And then he said, and years later, she left Hollywood and wrote me a letter and said, you fucking broke me. You ruined my life. And they're all kind of laughing and dying yeah. because the way he tells a story is just. And so people saw that and they're like, this is absolutely horrible. This is why it's so hard for female comics. And let me just tell you something. <laughs> it has not been a cakewalk. But as right. a female comic, I did not have to suck Joey Diaz's dick or anybody else's. And none of my friends did either. Right. Was it harder to get spots and all that? Yeah. That's why we made our own shows. Yeah. But. Yes, and, and the Joey Diaz one. This is it, this is an iffy one for me because it is yeah. his act. That's it's his, his act. act. It's his shtick. Like yeah, so. he would always say that. I mean, I remember he had a bit about getting some crack lady yeah. to do something oh, with him. He's like, got all sorts and he was of so it was so shocking, and the way right. he told it, it was his thing. It was extremely dirty. Like and and Joey did not apologize for this. He said, "If you think that story's shocking, wait to hear this yeah. one." And he came out with another one. So he's one of those guys who's not really backing down because he, there's nothing to take away. It's like he nothing said. to take away. He's 57. He has his podcast. He does really well. But I just want to say um, the story is horrible. And yes, there are a lot of horrible stories as a female comic. It was hard. We were hit on by the guys. But for me, once the guys knew that I wasn't going to fuck any of them, right? then they were like delightful, put me on their shows, walk me to my car so I wouldn't get raped by someone else. Yes. But I guess- But, he, yes. Having, now that's true for, in your case, but you you do know that oh, there totally, are so, yeah. um, so many others where it's just a shitty- And I, I, I'm friends with mostly female comedians. Yeah. You, Jen yeah. Kirkman, uh, uh, Sarah Colonna, Fortune, everybody. And I take women on the road with me and all that. Yeah. And I, I always say, even to you, yeah. I say, you couldn't stay in this hotel uh, yeah. right now. You can't walk home alone from the club right. like I can. Yeah. Club show's over for me. I could. I walk down the street to the hotel. You can't do that. Right. Uh, from not bec- Maybe it's comedians. Maybe it's fucking weird people on the street. But it's a different world for you than it is for, for me. And that's that's what people are saying now. And because, why is it because it's a sucks. nightclub atmosphere, right? Yeah. It's a drinking nightclub atmosphere. You you do your set at 10 p.m. and you're standing in front of the comedy store bullshitting with these guys until two. I remember one time I was bullshitting with all of them, and this one guy goes, "All right, so who are you going home with, him or I?" And right. I'm like, "Neither. My Toyota Celica that my parents bought me <laughs> right. is right. in the lot across the street. I'm gonna drive my fucking ass home, yeah, and lock the door behind me, and, and like." But that was me. I was also, like, 
I, I was just raised to just be like, no, you, you know, you don't use your body to get something. You're talented enough and whatever. And I would see other girls that would date or be with powerful people, and they did get up there quicker. Right. But unfortunately, my mom didn't teach me that way. She was like, you have a brain. You make your own money. I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> I mean, like, just, think. And just You could have sucked off Joey Diaz and done 10 minutes oh in the belly room. Oh, my God. I mean, I mean that's come on thing. now. And also, I'm like, what girl, though, I is going to be like, oh, thank you for telling that story, G- G- Joey. Um, I'm living in a trailer park. I haven't done stand-up since because I sucked his dick 12 years ago. I'm that blonde. Yeah. Like... And the funny thing is, doing 10 Minutes in the Valley Store was not going to get you anywhere, anywhere, especially back then. No. Uh, it's, you know, it's like everything else. It, t- it takes 20 years in the ma- in May. Not one set is going to blow you up. No, but you got to suck a thousand dicks before you get to anywhere no. in comedy. Um, anyway. Do you know, I just remember one time and I, I went into a casting with somebody and she was a, fe- a white female woman. And she's like, so what have you been doing? And I go, oh, I just was working on the Keenan Every Wayne show, but that's over with now. And she goes, whose dick did you have to suck to get that job? Yeah, I mean that's like that's like she a, said that to that's me. Like a, that, that was like the standard <laughs> joke for like you know back in the old days. That was it. And I was like, oh my god, I had to write a huge packet and not go to one party over Memorial Day weekend. I could have sucked a dick instead. <laughs> like I sucked a dick. That's it. Like a right. six minutes. Especially Keenan every way. Oh that's my probably a great god! Dick. I mean that six minutes or my entire weekend. Yeah. Trapped in my apartment. Those Wayans brothers parties. are handsome guys. Like, don't, if you're going to suck, that's not a Joey Diaz dick. You, I mean, you look at a Wayans dick, that's probably gorgeous. Just oh, saying. my God. No, of course. So, anyway. Okay, we're going to we're gonna share more. Uh, can we? Can you carry, go longer, Chris, sure, yeah, and join yeah, yeah. me on, on Patreon? Absolutely. We're going to talk about more about this. We're going to get Chris's opinion on, um, oh, more on Stassi and Amanda Stat, and there's some scoop on that. We're going to get more into everything. Oh, but before I go, wait, we make sure. Chris, what's going on? Where are you going? No. Oh, uh... Wait, scoop this up and then I'll do a new ending. Okay, so we're going to talk more with, with Chris on Patreon. But Chris, you went and you're performing live. You're going out there. I did. I went to Tacoma. Well, and now what's next? my first time back. Do you have anything lined up? Next time, and the next one is not until August. August is Me next. Too. Uh, how are you going? Uh, I'm going to Minneapolis, Minnesota, House of Comedy in the Mall of America in Minneapolis, Minnesota, August 13th through the 16th. Do you know there's no sales tax there? Yes. Is, one, uh, is, there, is there really? No, there really isn't, and yeah, I didn't know that till the last fun. day. And then you stay in a hotel attached to the mall. A lot of people bring an extra suitcase. That's, that's a good idea. I, would I bring, might do that. I'd bring an extra suitcase or just a really big one. Yeah. And now, I you haven't have been back fun. out in the world Stand up wise, Mm-mm. plain wise. I have any not of done stand up since my last date was March 9th. It was like my best set, by the way. Thank God I got the audio of it because I yeah. really don't. I've ha- I had a, a stand up anxiety dream recently. Oh no. Yeah, that I was I t- come not, could not remember any of my act. I was like, why didn't I bring my notebook? Um, yeah. Yeah. So it, it's getting weird now. But like the plane, everything's weird. The planes are weird. The airport's yeah. weird. It's like the, the Uber to the, ho- to the uh, hotel's weird. Everything's weird. Now. All right. Well, we're going to talk a little bit more with Chris on our Patreon, which will be up Friday. Everyone follow Chris. Listen to his podcast, Cover to Cover. Cover to Cover. Listen to Cover to Cover. I have a podcast and we, you know, we chop it up. Not unlike here. Chop it up. That's what they say. That's what people, the kids say. They chop it up means like talk. You know, we what we just did on this podcast. Have we you heard that, Kelly? You never heard. Kelly's that? never heard of it, oh, and she's twenty four. Uh, you know, we're gonna, we're just going to chop it up. And say, and all uh, the, by the way, Kelly was this beautiful at sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I knew her. <laughs> I would have invited you to a roast. <laughs> oh wait, Kelly! Oh, we got to tell Kelly's juicy story. What is it? You were propositioned. By who? We won't say who. But when Kelly was 16, she went to a concert. Where was it? In San Diego? It was in Orange County with her girlfriend. Okay. There were just two cute girls going to Thousand Oaks High at 16 years old. Yeah. The rapper guy approached them and said, come on the party bus with us. After the show. After the show, we're going to go to a club on Sunset in Hollywood. From Orange County? From Orange it's County. A long bus trip. And so anyway, Kelly, thank God. Because usually in a case like this, you've got one girlfriend that's like, let's fucking do it. Of course. And another one that's like, absolutely not. Well, lucky for Kelly, they were both equally nerdy and afraid. 
yeah. and turned it down. Oh, well. Because Kelly said, I just knew something would be expected. Right. And I think you guys told them, you go, we're 16. And they're like, they, we don't care. Did you tell them? Yeah, she was like, could oh, we? Wait. She didn't think she could get into the club. She didn't realize, like, of course, you could just walk in and no one's going to ask your, you know. So now I wonder, would you have gone had you known you could just strut on in? But um, she did the right thing. But the point is, yeah, had she gone, had something happened with this guy who is still a famous rapper, um, I would have a much juicier episode today. Right. She could be, she'd probably be on a real, real house was Atlanta or something right now. Throwing, oh, yeah. She could have been throwing drinks at people. Yeah. She could have been the ex wife. Fell in of, love. Yeah, the ex wife. Could have fell in love. Or she could have like a really like a story that she could spend all night tweeting about. Yeah. Wow. Well, you, it sounds like you fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. More, more to come with Chris on Friday's Patreon. Thank you.